Hey guys, Darren, and today I want to show you guys how to import PBR materials into SketchUp. So the new version of SketchUp, SketchUp 2025, has the ability to support PBR materials and environmental lighting. And with this, you can get, you know, like depth to your materials. So you can get uh, shadows inside the materials. You can actually have high points, low points, ambient occlusion inside of the material, not just the geometry. Uh, it's pretty cool. SketchUp is shipped with a whole bunch of PBR materials. There's a bunch of them up on 3D Warehouse. But what do you do if you need your own? If you got to go get your own specific materials and import them, we're going to take a look at how to do that right now. All right, so I have right here a uh, my attempt at a quick low poly Easter basket. So I didn't want to go in and necessarily model all the weaving of like a wicker thing. Uh, I wanted to keep it kind of simple, kind of light. And I did it, but it looks like a wooden bucket. It it just does not look like like a, a basket, right? Because I used I used a, a one of the wood materials. So if I come in here uh, to my default materials wood, I grab this first material, put it on here. So it looks okay, um, you know. And if I was far away from it, like I'd I'd buy that as what it is. Uh, I'm okay with the way the materials line up on the handle. It, just this right here does not look baskety. So. I want to import a new material to put on here to give it like that wicker weave look. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to start with some throwaway geometry just, just to make this easier. So I'm just going to come over here and create a surface. So, uh, so I have something to put this material on as I import it. Um, so I did go download a PBR material. So it downloaded a handful of different files. So it's not just a simple throw material on there. It's got multiple images in there for things like AO and for a normal map and that kind of thing. So uh, as we pull this in, I'll, we'll show you how to do all of that. That's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to go to File, Import, just like I would with a regular texture. Uh, I have this saved in this basket weave folder. And you can see, like I said, this, this imported a bunch of, a bunch of different files. So here's my basket weave. This is the actual material. This is the thing that looks like weave basket. But then I also have an AO map, an uh, uh, ambient occlusion map, and a normal map in here also. Initially, I'm just going to grab that main image. This is the image of the texture. This is what's going to look like the basket weave. I'm going to import it as a texture. I come into import. And I'm going to import this just like I would with a regular material. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to start scaling it up. I'm going to go to, you know, about where I want it to be. On, uh, on this material, you know, so what's what's gonna look right on that basket? So I'm gonna go about there. Uh, this is a tiling material, so this is already created so that it does tail, tile properly. And you can see right there, right, when I just, just when I import it, that already looks better than what I have on here. It looks like a basket. Um, it is flat, so as I look at it, it does look like I always say it looks like a laminate sticker, right? Because if I if I spin around far enough, I'll get the environmental light to put some shine on there. But see how that shine hits it, and it just hits uniformly. It's just hitting it like a light would hit a uh, a piece of laminate image, like a poster or something like that. So that's what we're gonna do now. Is we're gonna go through and we're gonna make this into more of a PBR material. Look at all these nooks and crannies that we should be seeing the light play with. That's what we're gonna set up right now. So I'm gonna go back home. You can see right here at the bottom, here's my new material I just imported. If I double click on that, I get the, the material properties pop up. So in here, when you import a material just like this, when I just grab an image, pull it in as a texture, just like you've been doing with SketchUp for years and years and years, it pulls it in and it does give it basic uh, metalness and roughness. This is a default that's set up in your settings. So when it comes in, it's, it has 0.13 metalness, 0.5 uh, roughness and I can of course slide that to make it more metally or more rough so metal is kind of like a reflectiveness and roughness is the opposite of reflectiveness and it kind of pushes away light some people look at something like this and go well I don't want any metalness that's fine I have found that giving it a little bit of metalness regardless of what the material is gives me more control so I can actually you know, when I crank up the metalness, the darks become, it's almost more contrast with, with metalness versus no metalness. So uh, even on something like this, which is a fairly rough material, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not super shiny. I would probably still keep metalness on. I'd probably keep it low, but we'll play with a little more once we get all the materials in here. 
So right now, you can see with that, like I said, if we look at it from the side, we get the, the, the environmental light bounce off of it, makes it real bright there where the light's hitting it. But let's, uh, let's keep going here with this. Let's add some more. Let's add some a normal map and an ambient occlusion map. Again, with the free uh, PBR that I downloaded, it came with the normal map and ambient occlusion map. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to turn on a normal, and I'm going to go grab my normal PNG and open it. And that's going to right away apply it. And you see how that just popped right now? Look at how these look like they come up more than this. See how it look, looks like it rises up over? That's just the normal map. And you can see how the light plays on it already. See that if, as I as I come over here, see how the, the right side of each of these bumped out pieces lights up more as I move it across? That's what the normal map does. The normal map tells it you have uh, you know higher and lower spots, so the light interacts with it as though there was actual geometry here. So this can be increased or decreased just like the others. I can really crank it up. And you can see, not, not only is the shapes of these loops uh, in that normal map, but you can actually see there's some grain here, right? So in this wicker, there's actually grain. As you crank it up, you can see that gets, oops, I grabbed roughness, wrong one. As I crank this up, you can see that that grain really shows up. Um, I probably don't want to go that hard. That looks like it's made of like some kind of angry plastic or something. So we're going to crank it back down, but still give it a little bit so it pops up. Um, again, all of these kind of play together too. So as I... As I crank up the roughness, less light's gonna reflect. If I drop it all the way down, it looks like it's wet and shiny. Um, so probably somewhere in the middle is where I wanna go with that. I also have the ability with this normal map to change where the light is hitting. So see that? So I can I can basically flip the normal map. Um, generally speaking, light's gonna come from above. Uh, so you know I can, I can play, how does that light hit? How do I wanna switch that? Um, and there you go. So these loops coming out get light on the top rather than on the bottom because it's lit from above. But I can flip the normal map by hitting this little button here. All right, one more piece we're going to add. We're going to throw ambient occlusion on here. Again, ambient occlusion. We're going to load the AO file that came with this PBR. And there we go. And that was, ambient occlusion is much more subtle, um, even cranked all the way up. But you'll see, it's this is kind of like the contrast button. So you can see, look at, see how that, that little shadow shows up watch this just right here watch right here how this interacts i pull it all the way back the two materials come butt up against each other as i crank it up i get a little bit of a shadow between there showing the overlap so by doing that now it looks like i have overlapping materials as i move around rather than just that flat image of the materials overlapping so that looks pretty good let's take that material now and let's apply it to the basket now on a flat surface like this it's pretty simple. It's done. If I was doing like the back of a chair, the seat of a chair or something like that, a wicker chair, I would be finished. Uh, because this is a material that needs to wrap, I don't have UV wrapping in SketchUp. So I do need to apply to the individual faces. So all I'm going to do is turn on, I'm going to go to view and I'm going to turn on my hidden geometry. That's going to show me the breaks. And then I can say, I can come in with my paint bucket and I will sample this material and put it right here onto, let's get out here this. All right, there we go. Pick that, drop it right here. Um, and then I can just sample, grab it and put it on the next one. So I just sample each individual material and paste it onto the next one. So th what this does is it effectively wraps that material in a circle around here. Um, if I just projected it on there, which would be an option, I'd be like something you do on a, a banner or something like that. Uh, it would look great from the front, but the sides, the material will get stretched out to wrap the rest of the way around. So by quickly doing this, just kind of clicking this around, uh, I'm actually telling it to break the material at each side. And there we go. So we did end up with a little bit of a seam. Um, I'll probably fix that by going like this and turn it around. Hey, it looks good again. There we go. Um, yeah, so see how much nicer that looks? I could do the same thing on the inside too. I could come in here and then do same thing, just sample click, sample click, uh, and wrap it around the inside as well. Uh, I could even drop it on the bottom if I wanted to, to just kind of sell that this whole thing is made of wicker except for the handle. Um, the other thing I could do is I could also adjust the color of the wood I used. So it's more in line with the material in the wicker. And that'll just make it, you know, kind of sell that it's all goes together 
less than uh, you know it's not gonna look like the exact same material but it'll, it'll make it look cohesive so there we go like that like that um, I'm getting closer so you can kind of see you can see what I'm talking about there look at how the material look as I flip it around as I look at the light chase across the material as I go like that let's get those let's get those edges turned back off again there we go so there we go a quick and easy like I said this is not something I would want to push out to render this is not a hero basket or anything like <laughs> a hero basket have those words ever been muttered before um, but it is low poly there's not a whole lot of geometry to this thing um, and it looks pretty good and like I said because the light hits on it it's actually going to interact with the environment as well let's get rid, let's get rid of this thing because this is the whoop. There we go. This is the star. In fact, sorry, Tom, Tom. You gotta, you gotta go too. There we go. We get our basket. Uh, so there we go. A quick and easy wicker basket using PBR materials. I know I called it quick and easy and then spent 10 minutes doing that, but uh, that was a lot of explanation too. I was showing how materials get pulled in, what each of those values are, and then individually pulling in. Um, to actually do that is a couple. If you have the files, it's a texture import and then import normal, import AO, and then you're adjusting and fine tuning and, and you're good to go. It really is a very quick process. And once it's in there, that material then can actually be saved into a template or part of my default material. So I don't have to do that every single time. I pull materials in once, save them, and then they can be part of SketchUp forever, I guess. Or a very long time. I don't know, whichever comes first. But uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, quick and easy way to get that in there. PBR materials. Great, great way to add depth to your geometry. It keeps you from having to have really dense material, dense files, and it just kind of simplifies the process, which is really cool. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please do leave us a comment. Uh, have you played with PBR materials? Do you have specific use cases you've come up with? Do you have specific questions about using them? Is there a different part of SketchUp you think would make a good video like this? Let us know down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.